Okay. <sighs> we don't have a lot of time. All right. <laughs> So little man is sleeping right now. So we're gonna jump right into this, all right? Hey kids, I'm Kamau. I'm Selena. And we're with the city and beyond. Here to bring you another airline review. And this time we're doing Tap Portugal. So we flew Tap Portugal about six years ago and had another opportunity last year to fly it again from England to Portugal at first stopover and then all the way home to Newark. Who wouldn't pass that up? Going on them again and doing like a nice stopover. Uh, so we had to we had to do it. We're gonna be c comparing both experiences, the one from six years ago and the one that we just had. It's gonna be a little difficult to compare and contrast, but we're gonna do our best to keep them pretty leveled and make sure we give you a pretty good score. Um, and so we'll keep you in suspense. We're gonna leave the score for the very end, so make sure you stay with us. We rate airlines on a scale of one to five. One being the absolute worst, five being the best. If you're interested in how to book stopovers or what they are, we have a video on that with the link in the description. And our little guy is waking up, so we're gonna take this on a couple of errands with us. So please bear with us. But come along. Luggage. Luggage is a sore topic because we do not do check bags, as I'm sure you're aware, but apparently, Tap Portugal does. For this trip, we brought a roller carry-on size bag for once on this trip. Because usually, you know, we usually I have like my backpack. And I have like the personal size rolling bag that we've been using. So we checked the sizing a million times. Took out tape measurers, lined it up, the whole nine. And for whatever reason, Tap Portugal said, we need to check this bag. So from Heathrow to Lisbon, they told us that the bag was too heavy. Okay, fair game. We're really good packers. Maybe the bag was too heavy. Yeah, we picked up some stuff in England. Sure. Yeah, so we're like, we'll do better this time. And so we did. We even weighed out the bag to make sure. We have a, we have a travel bag wear thingy. Really small, throw it in the bag. You can weigh your bag wherever you go. Well, Tap said it was too heavy and we still needed to check the bag. But there was truly some monstrous sized bags and they did not even like flag them down to weigh theirs. Yeah. But, but for some reason, ours was. It was really annoying. And then so from Lisbon to Newark, it took forever to get on the plane regardless, a little spoiler. But once I or we were in line to go on the bus to get to the plane, um, that all of a sudden, someone after hours, it felt like, I think it was hours, it was waiting. Right before I, I get on the bus, and I felt like this guy was eyeing my bag, and I was like, he's not gonna say anything, because this bag is small. Um, and like we said, we measured it, we made sure it was the right uh, amount for a carry-on, not for a personal bathroom. I had two personal, and I had a personal in the carry-on size. I'm like, I know that it fit, but he stopped anyway. He was like, that, that bag's too big. And I was like, my bag is too big. And I'm like, I, I'm not one and come out and attest to this. I don't really look at, in life in general, I hate to try to like be like, well, that person is blah, 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 blah. Like, I'm not that person, but I'm like, my bag, I just was like, my bag's not too big. And I was like, I measured it. He was like, you measured it? And I'm like, oh, excuse me. And I'm like, yes, I measured it. It's the right, like, measurements. He's like, okay, then put it in the sizer. And I was like, it's not gonna fit in the sizer. I like knew as soon as he said it, I was like, it's not gonna fit in the sizer. Cause we oftentimes do it just for like, you know, videos and stuff, we put it in the sizers. But it was a lot going on in Europe. I go to the sizer and I look at it and I'm like, if this was a soft case, luggage I think it would fit automatically but I was like because it's hard and I've never really had to put it in one of these sizers it was like the uh, metal ones not like a, a enclosed one 
I think I have a picture of it. But I go to put it in, and I'm like, this looks like it's only for a personal size bag. And he was like, no, that's the size bag. It was not. It was, I don't think it was. Because my was bag not. barely fit in it. And I wish I recorded while I was doing it, but, but it was just too much, too much going, going on. on. He put a tag on it, and Kamal was like, you are not putting that... You're not checking in that bag. Because yeah. we did everything, like we waited right, everything. So like this time we were like on it. We And no one had weighed our bags, I think at this no. point. So like we had waited and we were, and of course they didn't wait this time because we were like very, very, like we made sure everything was under and everything. Mm -hmm. We got on the bus. It was one of those ones where yeah. you have to get on the tarmac to go. Yeah. And I looked around and I am one to look. <laughs> But I'm not going to shout anybody out. But I'm going to be like, there was a few like, very, look, there was look. a lot of fat bags. And, and so what I did was, what any good husband would do, I tore that fucking tag off. <laughs> tore, Sorry, we should cut that. <laughs> I tore, tore, I tore the tag. He off. tore the tag off my bag. And then, so then, so I was about to leave it at the bottom, but which I felt weird about. Was like, I feel like my bag is just going to get left by accident because we we're like the last people on the plane. And Kamal was like, we're not leaving it. So he picks up the bag with the tag. And I'm like, well, if they see the tag, they're going to... And he, like, had it... I think you had it in your in hand. hand. Like, scrunched in his hand. So he's holding where he... The guy wrapped it around the handle. But then, we also saw the same exact bag already on the plane. So come out without any... He just whoops that thing up and puts it, it in. And it fits. Dad life. Around this time, Heathrow was a mess. There was all types of strikes and other things going on. Um, boarding was no exception. It was it was a pretty bad experience. Yeah, I mean, it, was, it wasn't probably the worst that some people had. No. Like, people were losing luggage and like, it was, yeah. I don't know if you know what happened, but there was a lot of like short staff and like a boom of travel right after the pandemic. So like a lot of airlines were just not prepared. And I think Europe got like the biggest like brunt of it like yeah like, like people were like losing luggage all over the place it was a big one which is why we didn't want to check in the bag just saying so we're trying to figure out our gate situation boarding so they haven't told us what time we're boarding but we just got a gate 45 minutes before our flight right yeah so using our normal travel um rolls that means we should head over to the gate because they're probably boarding in like 15 minutes yeah if they're not already yeah all right but the app isn't really telling us anything no i, I actually saw it on the board and then i checked <laughs> right aware but for whatever reason the tap portugal app has yet to tell us what our gate is so like if I was depending on this I'd be screwed so we're gonna head over and hopefully begin boarding I upgraded our seats as sort of a surprise to Selena um, she was one three two how long, how long were you like how far along was that? She was in the first trimester yeah, with, go, this, with this guy here. Go watch that video. Yeah. yeah. I, I was about like 10 to 11 weeks, I believe. So yeah. it's almost three months. Uh, I figure more space was better. And apparently Tap Portugal does this really weird thing where those seats are boarded last. Um, if I am not mistaken, and I, I could be wrong on this, and if I am, uh, we'll make an addendum at some point. As a result, we got to watch a lot of shenanigans happening as people got onto the flight outside yeah. of the issue that we had already discussed with, with our bags. Yeah. There was there was a lot of shenanigans. Seats. I'm gonna have to read some of this off because <laughs> I'm not gonna remember. But, uh, so those seats were pretty standard. We flew on, so the first part of our trip from Heathrow to Lisbon was on a 8320neo. But then from Lisbon to Newark, we were on the A321LR Neo. And uh, those are, and that one was like a newer plane. So it was pretty nice. And like Kamal said, he upgraded us to the Economy Extra. Oh, that was the name of it, Economy Extra. Yeah. Um, which in the end was a little confusing, like we said, because we weren't really sure what the perks were. Um, we did have the reserved bins above our seats. So when we did get on the plane, finally, 
the bins were available and we had somewhere to put our stuff. So compared to our old experience or previous experience, mm -hmm. so that plane, I don't remember which plane it was, but it seemed pretty new at the time. It did. But it was, I'm pretty sure it was like a two, four, two configuration. Mm -hmm. And we sat in the four seats in the middle uh, at the end on Correct. the left side of it. Yes. Coming yeah. home, probably I think maybe the same thing. I don't remember. That but I remember right. going for sure. This time we had somebody in between us. Kamal had the window, I had the aisle seat, obviously. Um, we've started to really just like that anyway, even besides me being pregnant. Yeah. Um, I like being in the aisle because I like, really, I'm just impatient. I don't feel like waiting for people to get up. And I like being on the window. And he likes to be in the window. Because I can lean on the side and sleep on yeah. it. Yeah. And then we didn't remember having outlets last time, but there are outlets at the seat this time yeah and i think it was on both planes the newer one and the one that we took initially from heathrow oh yeah and fun fact uh you know how like when you're on a plane above you the sign usually says um no cigarette smoking and you're like that's ridiculous you haven't been able to smoke on planes for years they had a different one and i can't remember i think it was like no like electronic devices or something i have a picture of it we'll put it on the screen hi i'm trying to keep your face off of the camera and you're over here trying to be like it's my debut at this point is the food. Food and drinks. Food and drinks. Yeah. Well, let's touch on the drinks. Alcohol is free. Uh, beer and wine, no hard stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think I don't so? think hard liquor is is uh, free, but beer and wine for sure. Mm -hmm. um, food. Food was pretty good. Um, so I don't think it's like the best airline food I've ever had especially in a coach or economy seat. Um, I think that it was just passable, like it was good. Yeah. So I thought the food was, was uh, pretty good. Um, I'm not expecting like Michelin star quality in the air, um, but I definitely had bad airplane food and this was not that. Uh, it just needed like a little salt and I think they gave us salt and pepper. Yeah, and it's a good it's a good spread of food. They give you like it was like a piece of bread and in this particular one we did uh, pasta mm -hmm. and I was really into pasta in my pregnancy. Yeah, and they had gifted like a little appetizer, a little dessert and uh, and some water to go along with it. So yeah. I thought I thought it was it was good. Yeah. It was pretty good. Uh, entertainment. So entertainment was actually pretty good. Um, they had a whole section about Portugal. Um, they had a kids section um, and lots of movies and um, TV shows for you to choose from. Mm -hmm. uh, the interesting part about the Portugal part was that I think it even introduced you to like wines from there and like different things you can do all there and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. And then also there was Wi-Fi. Um, there's free Wi-Fi for people. I don't know if it's because we had T-Mobile. I can't remember right now, but I'll put it on the screen. I keep saying that for everything. WhatsApp would work. iMessage would likely work. Oh, the Wi-Fi. Like, it's not like, I, I don't think like a, a messaging app like Fiber or something would work, but like your standard regular messaging app yeah, messaging, would work. Yeah. And, and WhatsApp for better or worse is like the, the typical international texting app. So that one works as well. Yeah. And Baby's up and we gotta go to the supermarket. Yep, so. Next point. So we just put little man to bed and we're gonna do our best to wrap up this video. And hopefully there's like no more hiccups. Yeah, we could just finish this video. I have yeah. like stains on my shirt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where did we leave off? <laughs> we left off at crew. crew. Nothing spectacular. Some were good. Some are bad. Some are indifferent, really. I don't want to even say even bad. They're just like indifferent, like yeah. nothing like really outstanding. I would say mid, mm -hmm. right? That's what the kids say now. It's mid, right? So like, I feel like uh, Qatar or Alaska or New Zealand, all those airlines, right? I feel like very attentive, at least when we've flown with them. Right. Whereas um, this round with Portugal, I can't really speak on, on the first one because it was, it was so long ago, but I feel like it was pretty good. Otherwise, we wouldn't be so excited to go back on it. I actually kind of feel like I had the same feeling the first time where it's like, like it wasn't like, I think that if we didn't have experiences like we did on Air New Zealand or Qatar or even Alaska Airlines, 
I'd be like, oh yeah, this is like just, you know, what it is. But like sometimes some crews are just really amazing. And I think that, um, for example, Alaska Airlines, we've flown them a few times now, a few flights. And I can say that consistently the crew is always like really uh, hospitable and just like overwhelmingly nice and like kind, I would just say kind. And a lot of the announcements on Tap Portugal are in Portuguese. I think they're all in Portuguese first and then English. General Celsius, espero que o voo tenha sido do vosso agrado para fazer todos a bordo. Mais uma vez, obrigado por voarem na Tap Air Portugal. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the captain. I'm going to that you've started our descent to Newark. Expect to land at uh, 3.50 p.m. local time. You may have like a little bit of a language barrier issue, but um, they're more than happy to like, uh, I guess maybe more than happy is not the greatest way to describe it, but they're more than um, willing. likely uh, willing yeah. to um, help you translate like, hey, like for us, we kept trying to ask for salsa the first time we flew with Tap Portugal and they were like, uh, Agua con gas, and like it's like so. Ever since then, we just say agua con gas <laughs> because and they know what we're talking about, and then um, like that's like how like I would say the crew is like that's a good like way to describe them with that scenario. We do want to point out that we do acknowledge that this experience with the crew, uh, a lot of people like there's like we said strikes and stuff going on in Europe. So a lot of people were just trying to get through the day and they were overworked and probably tired and just trying to get home. Yeah. And so we do want to take that into consideration. So we're kind of happy that we had that first experience where it's kind of like, uh, they were kind of like similar in attitude that time too, but um, nothing like, I wouldn't say like anyone was rude or anything like that. It's just kind of like indifferent. I, shall we, shall we score? I am prepared to give a score, are you? Tap Portugal? Yes. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready to score that. Initially, when we got home, I had them at a 2.5. Ooh. Um, Cause I feel like I was just like a little frustrated, but I feel like that's just the nature of right. what was going on. Then you, you realize everything that's happened, you get to marinate on it a little bit, right? And I feel like rating them that low would not be fair, but rating them exponentially higher than that would also not be fair so i'm going drum roll please don't even worry about it three oh okay okay i'm going okay. with the three he's going with the three i kind of feel the same way i think like once upon a time i would have probably given them like a four or four plus mm -hmm. combining past experience uh, and us being like a little bit more newer to this, you know, travel game in the beginning, the first time we flew with them, versus now where we have a lot of other airlines under our belt that like are above and beyond like hospitality wise. I would have to say that they're like a, I want to say they're like a 3.5. Are you yeah. over 3.5? Because I feel like their overall I score think that's good. is like I think a 3.75. I think that's good. What, what, what is it actually though? Uh, 3.25? 3.25 is correct. And okay. I think I think that is a fair score. Yeah. Okay. The stopover factor, you can't really beat it. I love it. You yeah. really can't you beat really it. Can. You can go to Porto or you can go to Lisbon, Lisboa right yeah and it's a part of your ticket this is not an airline that you should stay away from by any stretch of the imagination no, just like singapore airlines yeah. and i mean I, people were upset about that review but yeah we would fly singapore airlines again and absolutely we would, and we would obviously fly to portugal again these reviews are for the everyday working person who like if you have a decision to make which we've had before in this way where make we make these videos and you have to decide between which airline to make <laughs> the best bang for your buck. <coughs> it's good to like watch these videos so that you yeah. don't waste your money. <coughs> Slightly I'm, choking. And I want to just emphasize that nobody is paying us for these reviews at all. Because I've seen some of the, the, the comments where somebody thinks that we're getting paired. We trash a lot of these airlines. Like even if we give them a decent score, like we're, we're telling you, like, because I don't care. Like you're not going to ban me from it. It's not like I'm lighting a cigarette while I'm on the plane or something. Mm -hmm. 
I'm telling you about the experience I had on this leg on this particular day, yeah. right? Your mileage may vary. Take a moment to um, give us a like for this video if yes. you liked it. Um, subscribe if you want to like learn more stuff about not only airlines but inspiration for traveling. Um, like we just said, we had we just had a child, so we're gonna do a little bit more um some content to help people with kids yeah. um or babies right now um and encourage them to travel in ways that they can make that happen uh with their little one and also make sure you click the notification bell because our schedule is kind of crazy right now uh so we want you to get that notification when we do post a video so you don't miss it and remember to leave any questions you have in the comment section down below. We'll be sure to answer it unless it's repetitive because you got to look. We've answered most of them. <laughs> I don't know how many times I can answer the same question so many times. <laughs> Thanks for joining us and we'll see you real soon. Bye. Bye.